Okay, so before we get started on this week's learning, which is building on last week's, I want to do an example from last week. So we're trying to take this trinomial and break it down to the two binomials that are its factors. The two things that when we multiply them together, when we multiply what's here, we get this. And if you recall, we're going to use our X puzzle to do that. We take this here and we put it in the top of the X puzzle. And we take this coefficient and put it down here. And what we're looking for are factors that when I multiply, I get 15. But when those same two numbers are add-ins, I get 2. So first I want to make a list of factor pairs that would get me to 15. 1 times 15, 3 times 5. I know both of these things are going to get me to 15. One of these has to be a negative for me to get to negative 15. And I'm also looking if I add them, I'm going to get 2. So I'm thinking about this factor pair here. Those two digits are two numbers apart. So if I put 3 here and negative 5 here, when I add them, do I get positive 2? No, I would get a negative 2. So that has to be positive, and this has to be negative. Negative 3, positive 5, when I add them, I get 2, but when I multiply them, I get negative 15. So what we would do over here is we would just write them as part of these binomials. And if that makes sense to you from the work that we did last week, then you are ready for this new learning right now. If it does not make sense to you, I want you to go back and look at the video from May 27th. If what I'm doing right now still makes sense to you, I'm checking my work, then you're gonna be ready to continue on with this lesson. This is x squared plus 5x minus 3x minus 15. When I combine these like terms, I get x squared plus 2x minus 15. That is the same as what we started with, which means that this is our factored quadratic. So on to some new learning. <clears throat> I want us to think about, and I'm going to do this on paper real quick so that I can color code. I want us to think about what this quadratic looks like algebraically. AX squared plus BX plus C. That is the quadratic in its algebraic form. What we worked with last week was when this A was a 1, an invisible 1. So everything you did last week, you had an X squared plus something plus something, or these might have been negatives. But this was an invisible 1. This week, we're going to be working with numbers that are greater than 1. So our objective this week is when a is greater than 1. That means that this will not be a negative number. It will be a positive number larger than 1. But I want us to think about how these are related, how things are related to each other. So let's start off with the binomials 3x plus 4 times 2x plus 1. And if we distribute those and multiply them out, we would end up with 6x squared, 8x, 3x, and 4. What that's saying is that this, when multiplied, is equal to 6x squared plus 8x plus 3x plus 4. We have some like terms there. These are like terms, so I can rewrite this as 6x squared plus 11x plus 4. And I want to do a little color coding here. This is this and this. This is this and this and it turned into this when we combined our like terms. 
That means C is the number that's in our problem when it's completed that has no variable attached to it. So that's important because we're saying we can see the relationship between this equation and what we multiplied here and what happens here. The question now is, how do I take this and get it back to this form when this number is larger than an invisible one? So using our X puzzle, we're going to do something a little bit different this week. We're going to multiply these two numbers. 6 times 4 gets us 24. And the multiplied piece of this puzzle is still going to be at the top, but it's going to be this combined with this. And then this just goes in the base of the X puzzle like we did last week. And now I'm thinking about what are two factors that when I multiply them, I get positive 24, but when I add those same two numbers, I get 11. Well, it's either 2 and 12, which doesn't work. 6 and 4 doesn't work. I'm going to try 3 and 8. When I multiply 3 times 8, I get 24. When I add 3 plus 8, I get 11. So those are the correct ones. I'm going to take this and I'm going to use this information to rewrite this. 6x squared plus 3x plus 8x plus 4. The 6, 6 squared and the 4 I brought straight down here. I'm taking this 11x and it's broken apart here. And I know it from this puzzle. We're going to combine those to double check that we have 11, and we do. But to continue factoring this, we're not going to add them together. We're actually going to take, and we're going to break this into two binomial sections. This is called factoring by grouping. And I'm, I just grouped these two together and I grouped these two together. And I'm going to take this pair and I'm going to say, what can I divide out of it that would be divide, I could divide into both of these? Well, I can divide six by three and three by three. And they both have an X I can divide out. So I'm going to rewrite that as three X and then I'm going to take and put inside this parentheses what's left when I divide the 3x out. 6x squared divided by 3x would give me 2x. 3x divided by 3x would give me 1. Now I've got 8x, 8, 8x plus 4x. What can I divide out of the two of those terms? Well, a 4 can be divided out of both of them. So I'm going to put the 4 there and the parentheses. 8x divided by 4 would give me 2x. 4 divided by 4 would give me 1. Notice that these two factors are the same. That means I did it right. Because they are the same factor, so I can rewrite them as one of my first factors, or one of my two factors. Um, and I'm going to take this piece and this piece and make them their own other parentheses set. And if you look here and you go back to what we started with, they are the same. There's the 2x plus 1. There's the 3x plus 4. And as we know, because of commutative property, um, it doesn't matter that this starts off with the 2x plus 1 and this starts off with the 3x plus 4. They're the same thing. So with that, let's do a couple of examples. I'm going to zoom out a bit because I'm writing on the whiteboard now and I write a lot bigger on that than I do on paper. So 10x squared plus 17x plus 3. I want you to pause this and get that written down. We're going to make our x puzzle. We're going to multiply these two and we get 30. We're going to take this and put it down here. And I want to start listing factor pairs that get me to 30. And I'm looking for a factor pair that when I add it, 
I get this number down here and I see it right here, two and 15. So I'm gonna rewrite this as 10x squared plus 2x plus 15x plus three. And I want you to pay attention to where all those parts came from. These two things just got brought down here. We took this and we wrote it because we figured out what those terms were from our X puzzle. And we know we're right if these two get added together and we get that. Next step is we're gonna group this into two binomials. We're gonna divide out what both of these terms have in common, the greatest common factor of these two. And when I look at that, I see two and I see X because 10 can be divided by two and so can the two. And there's an X, two X's here and a single X there. So I'm gonna pull that out and say 10 X squared divided by two X is five X. Two X divided by two X is one. What can I divide out of this? Three. This doesn't have an X. This one does, and they both would have to have it for me to divide it out, but they both can be divided by three. 15X divided by three is going to be five X. Three divided by three is one. And if you notice again in my parentheses, is the same thing. So we're almost finished here. 2x plus 3 times 5x plus 1. I got this from these two because they are the same thing and I took these and made the other pair. Now we can check our work going back to everything we've been learning over the last few weeks. When I combine these like terms, do I get 17? I do. And so I see my 10x squared, my 17x, and my three, so it checks. So we will do a little bit more of this tomorrow in our class meeting. Um, I am going to post an assignment for you to try a few problems and um, we can talk more in our class meeting tomorrow.